So what brought you from political radio to making educational content? Why? I was never into political radio. It's true talk radio is known for being political. At least half of my content is not political, personally, since you're asking a personal question. For example, I do 15 hours a week of live radio. One hour a week, no matter what happens, is on happiness. One hour a week is called the male-female hour. One hour a week is called the ultimate issues hour. We talk about religion and philosophy and the meaning of life and so on. So I, I, I'm not a political junkie. I, in fact, I, I don't even particularly like politics as a subject. I, it's too important to avoid, obviously, but that is not what, what animates me. Are you ready? Because I say, are you ready? Because it sounds so corny as to be almost unbelievable. But what has animated me since high school, and I can prove it because I wrote it in my uh, diary, journal when I was a junior in high school. I want, I know what I want to do with my life, influence people to the good. I have been obsessed with good versus evil all of my life, since high school. And that's that's really, that's what matters to me. So th this is a an outgrowth of that preoccupation. Did you, was there a moment though when you realized there was a need? And then oh, there, the moment was in high school. <laughs> I, I, I remember actually to almost, I could almost date the moment. I would, I would say eighth grade. So there was a program with the, you know, the legendary broadcaster, Walter Cronkite. So he had a show, and I'm sure it's a, people could even watch it. It was, of course, black and white. But people could watch it even today on the internet. It's called the 20th Century. And it was about events of the 20th century in the middle of the 20th century. And so on one occasion, Hitler came onto the uh, television set. And I said to my parents, who's that? They said, his name is Hitler, he's a very bad man. And, said, and, they, and I said, and what, did, what did he do? He said, well, he killed six million Jews. And it had a very big impact on him. Not, not at all solely because I was a Jew, because I remember my reaction. Just that somebody could do that to one group. And I thought, wow, how, how do you prevent evil? And that got me started. So I, I, this is an outgrowth of my preoccupation since eighth grade. I, I really hate evil. I do. And by the way, that, that became my favorite verse in the whole Bible. Most people don't know it. But there is a verse, which is really amazing when people who have not heard it. If he, those of you who, I'm translating from the Hebrew, those of you who love God must hate evil. It's a command. Hebrew has a command form in its verbs. In, in other words, if you don't hate evil, you don't love God. So I'm, I, I think I qualify. What is the evil that Prager you is fighting? Well, many. Uh, one is the evil that humans do in daily life, where, where they just act cruelly to, to, their, to their neighbor, to, to a family member. A, a lot of what we do is about character development, which is what American education was preoccupied with. David Brooks of the New York Times, who, who is uh, a dem now a Democrat and, and you know, hardly uh, person you'd ever consider on the right. He had a column recently, a very long piece in the Atlantic, not in the New York Times, about how much of American education until the, the mid-1900s was character development. Just about character development. We stopped, and, and I think the consequences are there to see that with the moral chaos that I believe exists in America. So a lot of what Prager you is about, it's not the part that those who don't like us publicize, but it, it is just about be a better person. I, I, I have some videos on, on how, how to be a better person. I'm only one out of ten videos, but the vast majority of videos are, are others. But that, that's, that's, so that's one part. Then there, then there is actual evil. Nazism is actual evil, fascism is actual evil, communism is actual evil, where 
hundred million people were killed by communists. I just wrote a column, I write a weekly column as well, and how little evil American students know. They, they, they don't know what Mao did, they don't know what Stalin did, they can't identify the Gulag Archipelago, they don't know what Pol Pot in Cambodia did. I mean, it, it's, if you don't know how much evil there has been just in the last hundred years, you, you, you can't, you can't obviously fight evil, and you can't have a, 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 a wise understanding of the human condition. So, on, on both the personal and the macro, I hope we're fighting evil, and, and just as important, developing good. But when it's a, a program or a, a content offering that's positioned as filling a gap in the American education system, there must be an evil then that you've addressed there. Can you, Hopefully. Be, more, can you be more specific? I mean, how does this actually play out in children's lives? Well, as I said, certainly on the character issue. Uh, now, let me, let me just make clear to you, because this is a very big operation, and I purposely don't get involved in everything. I have no desire to be a controlling presence or a dictator or anything even analogous to that. I do work on every one of the six, uh, five minute videos, oh, six came in, 600, 600 videos, uh, and they're for people who are older than elementary school age. They're basically from ninth grade till 100 years of age. And I work on those and I can, I can answer that better than the, the specific kids content. But the gap that we fill, which is very sad in our view that it even has to be filled, we don't think they learn much in American schools. I mean, I, I, we, the, I just noted to you, I, I would bet uh, anyone, you or anyone, I, and I'm not, I have no gambling instinct, so I only bet when I'm sure I would. Uh, I would bet that at least two-thirds of, uh, of the students at Harvard cannot tell you what the Gulag Archipelago is. Now, it, the vast majority of Americans under, under 60, let's say, could not. I mean, 20 to 40 million people were killed there. I mean, doesn't that qualify as worthy of study? The, uh, Pew, according to Pew, what, what was it? The, uh, the a staggering percentage of, uh, of young people can't identify Auschwitz, which is even better known than the Gulag. For the record, my public school definitely taught us about Auschwitz. And while I'm sure I have classmates who, who would struggle to recognize some of the other aspects of history you've mentioned. Right, I think you you're know. right. Auschwitz, I think I said that. But uh, you, there are, as you are young, but there are people younger than you. And you would be astonished at, uh, at, at the ignorance. Look, I mean, to get quote unquote political for a moment, if if you're spending a good part of the day uh, uh, teaching kids about preferred pronouns and uh, and other what we call woke issues, then you you're really not teaching them. I mean, even if you agree with, let's say you agree, everybody should have a preferred pronoun, right? He, she, or he, he, him, she, she, her. Z, Zir, that's not I'm being not being cute, it's one of the options. They, there. Even if you agree with that, the amount of time spent on it. How many kids, for example, are taught music or art? I'm into music, I conduct orchestras as an avocation. They they there is no musical knowledge like there was two generations ago. Where, kids learn instruments at school. I go into public schools all the time as part of my job, and I talk to teachers in liberal states like California and more conservative states like Texas and Oklahoma, where I know Prager has relationships and, and teachers are using your content already in the classroom. What I hear from teachers of every background is that they are slammed from block to block. They are underpaid, they are underappreciated, 
and that they don't even have time to talk about pronouns, gender theory, critical race theory, all these things that people have accused them of in recent years. And while there may be an incident you can point to here or there. I don't think they're telling you the truth. I actually think they're lying to you. You I'm think sorry. all of the teachers not are all. lying? No, not at all. If Look at the teachers' union's positions. The teachers' unions are among the most radical groups in the United States of America. So unless you believe that all the teachers who are a member of teachers' unions have no idea what the teachers' unions are saying, I don't think they're telling you the truth. And it's a terrible charge to make, because I was raised in a traditional Jewish home where you're supposed to respect your teacher like your parent. When, when the principal of my school walked into our classroom, we all stood up. I was raised to venerate teachers. It is one of the biggest problems of, of my internal life that I have not come to respect the teaching profession in America like I was raised to. Or, to, or in Jewish life, doctors are, 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 are like many gods. I don't respect the medical profession anymore because it lied to us. The American Medical Association has announced that you shouldn't put the sex of a child on a birth certificate because they'll determine later what sex, sex they are. The American Medical Association. Are you, are, are you proud wonder, of that? You don't have to wonder about what teachers are doing. You can go into schools. I'm sure Prager has. Yes, and the parents has. saw what they're doing during COVID and they got very upset. In fact, we, we do know what they're doing. So, look, e, you know, either they're telling you the truth or I'm telling you the truth. We can't both be telling you the truth. Either we made up that we who are called conservative, I, am, I was raised a liberal, I have not changed one of my values, but I'm called a conservative, which is fine with me. But one of us is not telling the truth. Either the schools overwhelmingly are teaching kids that America is systemically a racist country, that race matters, that it, 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 period, race matters. Race matters is a racist idea. I am a liberal, I was raised a liberal, and that was race doesn't matter. Only the human being matters. Do I know a damn thing about a person if I know they're white? Do I know anything? Do I know anything about a person if they're black? Nothing. They are taught race is important in almost every public school in the United States and most private schools. That is an awful, awful thing to teach. It is anti-goodness and, and it is racist. Now, if they tell you we don't say race is important, they're lying to you. I have seen teachers, and I mean in districts in Oklahoma and Texas, where the vast majority of the teachers would actually identify with a lot of the content in Prager who I You're think, right. vote oh, yes. conservative, oh. they vote Republican their entire That's lives. That's correct. And they've, you, been Oklahoma accused, and they've been accused of pushing things, and they have literally no idea what... Yeah, I, I agree with you. In Oklahoma and Texas, that's largely true. That's but, true. But, the, but they're being, the same aspersions are cast upon them. They're being told by people at school board meetings and at the national level by their state superintendents that they're doing this right. stuff. Listen, These I, are people who you're collaborating with, who you are entering into partnerships with, who have talked about teachers in that way in okay. their conservative states. Well, it's hard for me to believe that people are making up stories about what is told at school. I mean, we have the books that are used. We have, I mean, I speak, okay, look, we speak, it's fascinating. I hope you're right, to be honest. I'm not rooting to be right on this. I hope kids are taught race doesn't matter. I'd like to know how many teachers in the United States of America have said those words to, to their students. Race doesn't mean a damn thing. They don't have to say the word damn. I'd like to know the percentage of teachers who have said that. When I was a kid, all teachers said that because they were all good liberals. They weren't leftists. I make a big distinction between liberal and left. All of my teachers taught me race doesn't mean a thing. And if you think it means something, you're a racist. How many teachers say that? I have yet to come across a teacher who has told students, your race defines who you are. America is bad or evil. You should be ashamed to be white or American. All the things that people are claiming. I have yet to find a teacher. And often when you find those claims of a parent who has said a teacher made their kid that way, feel that way, and you do some research, you often find that what that teacher has been accused of didn't quite happen the way we were told. Hmm. But, well, but, I, I but, can, but, I, but look, let's take listen, I can, only, I can only say, and I, and I, I 
from the bottom of my heart. I hope you're right. I speak, okay, you speak to teachers, and they deny that this is what they're saying. Okay, okay. I don't believe them, and I'm not even sure they're aware. And I don't, I don't think they wake up and say they're gonna lie to you. I don't think they're aware all the time of, the, of what they're communicating, that race is important. Look, uh, what did they just do in, uh, in, in, oh yes, outside uh, the why is the Why is the idea that race is important or that it matters to people a racist idea? That is the definition of race, that race determines anything about you is the definition but that's of di race. But that's different. Saying something that is important or that it matters is not the same as saying it determines okay, things about I, I, you. Okay, right. Fair enough. It's, a, it's an interesting distinction. It matters, but it doesn't tell us anything about you. Then how does it matter? A million different ways that it can matter. Knowing your family history, your heritage, being proud of who you are, where your loved ones Wait have a minute. come from. I don't, I don't, I don't understand things. being proud of your race. I, I, it's not language I use. When I, I always tell the story, when I was bar mitzvah, I was given a book, Great Jews in Sports. It wasn't a thick book, I acknowledge. Uh, but uh, I remember thinking, what the hell do I care? And I, I was a religious Jew, an Orthodox Jew, in a, in a Jewish school. And I said, I, I don't really care about great Jews in sports. I just care about great athletes. I don't, under like I don't understand, opinion, I, don't, I don't like ethnic and racial pride. Because if you take pride, I, I wrote a whole essay on this. So Jews are proud of all the Jews who won, and, and, I'm, a, and I am a committed Jew, religious Jew. I founded a synagogue, I've written uh, a, a Torah commentary of five volumes. I've written the most widely used introduction in English to Judaism. I have a pretty strong Jewish background and I'm a strong Jew. But, but I don't think in terms of pride because if I do, I have to think in terms of shame or I'm, I'm intellectually dishonest. So I'm proud of the Jewish Nobel Prize winners. Am I proud of all the Jews who gave Stalin the secrets to the nuclear bomb? Do you know that most of the people who gave Stalin secrets to the nuclear bomb were Jews? I don't think saying I'm proud to be Jewish or I'm proud to be black means I condone everything no, anyone who shares. If you are proud of your race, then you have to be ashamed of your race. Otherwise, it's intellectually dishonest. There are many contexts in which knowing about race or understanding race and heritage is not just valuable or maybe enjoyed by people, but critical to understanding the facts. I was just in Tulsa with educators using PragerU in their classrooms. And you can't understand the history of that city without understanding race. You can't talk about the Tulsa race massacre accurately in class without understanding that one group did that to another group because of their race. That's Agreed. Agreed. So, so how do so you, if, what, if teachers what, what, don't talk about those things, no, or well, they should. It's discussions part of American class, history that the, the, the Tulsa. Uh, anti-black riots are part of American history and they are a disgrace. But then, in, but in that context, race matters. Race it, is well, important. It certainly mattered then. I don't know why it matters today. Because people are talking about it. They're learning in, in their classrooms about right. history. So, so a student might ask a question or a student might even be a descendant of someone who witnessed that. Right. right? And, and therefore what? And therefore they might want their teacher to talk to them about black history or they might want to yes, celebrate course. a hero of theirs and or, right. or maybe all, they all want of, to talk about their is, pain all of that is fine so what do you think of all black dorms at colleges all black graduation exercises what do i personally think about well, this is not about my, my personal okay things. what does one thing you i'm using as interchangeable with what so the people who are telling me how important it is to speak about race do, do they also agree with the movement toward black dormitories? I, I, I was taught that in, racial integration is the American ideal and is the liberal ideal. The only two groups that are for black dormitories are the Ku Klux Klan and uh, leftists. Liberals are against it and conservatives are against it. And yet we have it at, at, uh, at many universities. It's a disgrace to have an all black dorm. I can't comment on that. I don't have an opinion. Okay, well, I'm not asking you about I don't think I'm that just, teachers I'm, are... I do have an opinion on it. Okay. And, and they should be asked about it. See, I don't believe in racial pride. I, I, I mean, we just made different. That's fine. I believe that, uh, that what matters is you, 
This is the American dream. You matter. You are infinitely precious. Your color is infinitely, unimpressively unimportant. I'm sorry. It is not important. I'm not Dennis the Jew. I'm Dennis a good person or a bad person. My favorite phrase in the world outside of the Bible is Viktor Frankl, a Jew who went through the Holocaust and wrote one of the ten books that most influenced me, Man's Search for Meaning. He lost, his, his wife was murdered by the Nazis, his, he had family members murdered, he, he himself was in a death camp, he escaped, uh, or he, he survived, and at the end he was asked, do you, do you hate the German race? <coughs> do you hate the German race? And his answer was, no, there are only two races, the decent and the indecent. That is the motto of my life. There are only two races, the decent and the indecent. Are you decent and I decent is the only question that matters, not what is your race or ethnicity. Sorry, that's my view. The human is infinitely precious, created in God's image, and that's what matters. And let's say you're biracial, or let's say you have four different groups. Are you proud of all of them? Is Barack Obama proud of his white heritage and his black heritage? He was raised by a white mother. His black father had nothing to do with his upraising. Why doesn't he speak of himself as biracial? I, I, I don't care, he, but... He does talk about his heritage a lot. He has. Uh, yeah, okay. Years. All right, fair enough. If, 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 if It's not my take. But it, it, anyway, I don't think in terms of race. I, well, I admit well let's talk about some of the content then, which of course will intercept us on this. I've watched many, many PragerU videos, and I've spent time with educators using the content. And what I've found is, especially when it comes to topics involving race, that there is context, there's truth that is missing. Take the Christopher Columbus video that I know a lot of people talk to you about. The perspective of indigenous people isn't really evident in that video. When you look at the video, which is, I think, a little bit more than five minutes, the video A Short History of Slavery, the host defends white people's actions, the way in which they fought for abolition, the way in which they died fighting in the Civil War. But at no point do they actually talk about what American slavery was really like. Why leave all that out? If if this is about feel, the if, truth if, and about so additional context. Why if you that feel out? that way, I promise you, on camera, we will make a video on how terrible slavery was. You have lots of videos what, what, dealing with slavery, but why leave yes. them out in the content? Well, I, I don't know that we, I, I, again, the child videos are not my area, so I can't answer fully. I can answer on the Columbus. Columbus was asked something to the effect of what, uh, of what he thought about slavery, and he defended slavery. Because Columbus did defend slavery. Because everybody in 1492, black, white, indigenous, Asian, everyone defended slavery. Had we had Columbus say slavery, that is despicable, that is immoral, that runs counter to everything I believe in, then we would have been attacked at whitewashing, no pun intended, whitewashing Columbus. We would be putting nonsense words into his mouth. We put real words into the mouth. Because in the 15th century, virtually everybody defended slavery in every civilization. And my, 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 my issue, I mean, you might as well ask, why don't we have a video on the largest uh, slavery movement of the time, and that was Arab slavery. We have, no, we have no video about that. Maybe we should make one. And they castrated the black slaves that they took in because they didn't want them to reproduce. They were not castrated in the New World. Does that make New World slavery good? New World slavery was despicable. Well, they were, in the New World, raped, bred, yeah, that's Family right. separated. Yes, you're right. It was horrible. I, 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 I totally agree. One of my heroes is Frederick Douglass. That I think every every American child should. Right, be but that con what I'm saying is that context is missing from those videos. If, if it is, you do actually in the a short yeah. history of slavery video that you do talk about slavery in the Muslim world. You, the host goes around the world and points okay, to because instances. everybody so had it, but we never right. Made, that we, point we, is we made, made very one. well in that video, yeah. but. It's labeled in a way that would make a child think they're okay. about to learn more about slavery itself, okay. Again, and I then they don't learn right. about it. It's not fair for me to comment on, on an area I don't specialize in at Prager I, I can I can tell you this, though, what I do say to adults. 
since slavery was universal, the, the moral question that I ask is not who had slaves, since the answer is everyone. The, the, the most important moral question is who abolished slavery? And as Frederick Douglass put it, uh, and, I, and I quote, uh, he's not quoted in, on this particular one, but I, I quote him in an article I wrote. Frederick Douglass wrote, it was abolished by the British, and then it went over to the Ameri to America to abolish it. That's Frederick Douglass. He, he understood where the, where the movement to end slavery came from. It happens to have come from the Western world. That's not insignificant. And most, most young Americans, again, I would bet big money on this, don't know that. All they know is how terrible the Western world was because it had slaves. But they don't know that only the West, or not ultimately, first the West, not only the West, first the West abolished it. That, that's not insignificant. I have spent as much time studying as a Jew and as a human I, who rescued Jews in the Holocaust as who killed Jews in the Holocaust. Because I am as interested in goodness as I am in evil. Good people are rare. Bad people are not rare. And therefore, I'm more interested in, this, in, in studying goodness. I am more interested in who abolished slavery than who had slaves. The answer to who had slaves is human, human nature is pretty awful. That's just that's the way it is. You can be a good person. You, you, are, you are not born evil, but it's a lot easier to cheat than to be honest. Unfortunately, that's the way life works. It's a lot easier to cheat on your spouse than to be faithful a whole life. It's a tough thing to be a good person. That's not taught. And so we don't teach goodness. So perhaps what Prager U has thought, maybe it's really important to teach who did good since bad was so ubiquitous. Maybe you should learn who did good. Who, who did save a Jew in the Holocaust? Who, who, who did abolish slavery during the slavery era? I think those are important to teach. I think teachers would agree with you on that point, that positive histories and heroes are really important for kids to learn about but not at the expense of the reality of your I happened. agree with you, and I don't. I, if we do it, then we're guilty. If we don't do it, we're not guilty, and you'll have to address this with the people who make the, the kids' videos. But if you feel that, I take you seriously, then if you feel a video explaining how terrible slavery was would be helpful to put our other videos for kids in context, I would be happy to do so. In the past, you you addressed some accusations and criticisms against you and you talked about how in a way PragerU's content was indoctrination. What did you mean yes, by that? Yes, well I did say what I mean. We teach doctrines. I took the word literally. Of course, we, who doesn't teach doctrines? It, for example, tolerance. Is that a doctrine? Should we teach children? Should we teach children tolerance? To those who they took that quote out of my speech for Moms for Liberty in Philadelphia, because I was asked about it. And I said, yes, we teach doctrines. That is I don't know, how do you have moral education without doctrines? Everyone is created in God's image is a doctrine. Love your neighbor as yourself is a doctrine. Do unto others as you would have done to you is a doctrine. I, there's no such thing as moral education without doctrines. It doesn't exist. So in that sense, we give doctrines, and I thought that that is the literal definition of indoctrinating. So are you just in a race for who can indoctrinate the kids first, who can win their hearts and minds? To a certain extent, I guess you, you, might, you might have to put it that way. But I, I want their doctrines taught. They don't want ours taught. That's the difference. I was asked on one of my fireside chats, which I, I 300 something, Prager U, I do, do, do every week. And it's mostly young people around the world. So I get questions. Half, half, the, half the fireside chat is questions. So uh, one young person, I don't know from where, asked, so Dennis, how do we know who's telling the truth? Well, well we have these competing doctrines. And I said, here's a good rule of thumb. Those who wish to censor are lying. 
both sides are engaged in some censorship. Oh, 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 oh. I don't believe that. I, I just spent time looking at a no-no library of books that yeah, yeah. We you're have censored, are inappropriate We, we have kids. censored books for children all of the history of America. That's the task of an adult is to censor books for children. I, I raised two kids. They would say, Daddy, can I watch this? I go, no. I censored TV. I censored movies. I censored videos. I censored books. Any society that doesn't censor books for children is a sick society. Well, there is we don't censor for adults, and the left censors for adults. That's the difference. But when we're talking about Prager U kids, and kids needing to learn accurate and tough and difficult subjects Correct. sometimes, when you look at what's happening in terms of book banning, the removal of content from curriculums around the country right now, it is primarily conservative parents or parents aligned with conservative organizations who are filling out those forms, who are asking for books to be removed, even books that aren't in the curriculum and just happen to be on library shelves that a kid okay. can I can't on. answer for every book at every single school district. I can only tell you that some of the books that I do know that uh, are on the, in the sexual arena uh, have have been uh, unbelievable. If it, I don't think there is a liberal, there may be some leftists, I don't think there is a liberal parent in this country who would not want to censor books showing sex acts that they that I have seen pictures of for kids in elementary schools. That's that's what I know of. I, I cannot address every aberration. There may have been, look, uh, I re, I'll never forget, there was a, a conservative, I, be, I believe a, a senator, who uh, did not did not want uh, the uh, the Spielberg movie uh, The Man Who Saved the Schindler's List. He did not want Schindler's List shown because the some of the Jews marched into the gas chambers were shown naked. I thought the man was out of his mind. That that had nothing to do with sex. It had no, it was the last thing in the world. It it was the degradation. Almost all the Jews of the six million were killed naked. Almost nobody knows this. Because the Nazis not only wanted to murder Jews, they wanted to degrade them first. I think that's an important point to make. That's not nudity, as we think of nudity. The, uh, so... I, I think a lot of liberal matters. parents and teachers would actually agree with you. I have no on doubt about that. I agree. I'm, I'm attacking a conservative with, with this story. I, 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 there are a lot of people on the conservative side who say stupid things. Why do you think so many parents are attracted to Prager U content? Because it's wholesome. What do you wholesome. think amounts for the growth? That's it. That's the answer. It's wholesome. It's the old-fashioned uh, 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 approach of we're, we're not going to get you, we're not going to create angry kids. We're not going to create inbreds. As I say all the time in America, you get a BA in ingratitude at college, you get a master's in ingratitude, and then a PhD in ingratitude. We don't teach ingratitude. We think you're lucky to be an American, which immediately labels us conservative, which is really pathetic because that's what liberals believe all through the history of liberalism. What has it been like trying to build these partnerships with states like Oklahoma and Florida? How did it happen? I don't know how it happened. I don't know who approached whom. I only know that uh, I, I personally have been in touch with one such person, the superintendent of schools, Ryan Walters in, uh, in, in, in Oklahoma. And uh, it, it, it's, I, I'm really trying to arrange that I come to Oklahoma and speak because the, the distorted picture of Prager U we produce such nice, wholesome stuff. I mean, I, we have, I don't know, a thousand, at least a thousand videos. It's impossible to have that many videos on sensitive subjects and not be able to extract the line. But the Columbus line is dishonest. Columbus, we have Columbus saying something honest. We, we didn't whitewash the man. And then when the kids say, you know, we came from the future and they're, they're, they abolish slavery in the future, he gets very happy about it. They never show that part, which is the very next sentences in that video. I'm not sure that would be accurate. You're right. You're, that, you're 100% right. 
So that's a perfect example. If he condemns slavery, we're not telling the truth. And if he defends slavery... I don't think the we, issue most people take with that video is that is actually how he feels about slavery. I think it's that, oh, that they, Leo and Layla didn't go talk to a Taino person, an indigenous American, well, and hear their perspective. Yes, that that's, that's an interesting point. And uh, I... I can tell you from, and I read a lot of the attacks, mostly it has been about the statements on the uh, interestingly enough. And by the way, it is historically true that there was a horrible local tribe, I don't, it, it, that is mentioned, I don't remember the name of the tribe, that did engage in cannibalism. And, and, and they did ask Columbus's help in, in, in fighting them off. I mean, we tend to romanticize indigenous uh, cultures, but uh, that's that's not historically accurate either. They had slavery, they had torture, they had human sacrifice. I mean, look, we believe that in terms of elevating the human condition, Western civilization has been the best civilization ever created. Call it Judeo-Christian, if you will. We don't believe whites are better. By the way, I always remind people when I'm accused, which is somewhat of a joke, being a white supremacist, Hitler was white and Stalin was white. So the idea that I would think, me who is preoccupied with evil, that whites are any better than anybody else, given that the two greatest mass murderers outside of Mao were white, is absurd, just absurd. But I told you, I only have two races, the decent and the indecent. I don't give a damn what your race is. I'm sorry. I plead guilty to being race blind. It means nothing to me if you're black or white or Asian or whatever. It means nothing to me. I, I, I don't know how often I have to but say that's that. that's an opinion. That's a feeling. And a, and a it's very, not a feeling. And it's a, a conviction. Valid, it is not a, a feeling. A it is, a, it is, it, it is the deepest conviction. It, it, but not a oh, fact. It is a fact. I know nothing about a human being if I know if they're white or black. Nothing. We, we, I don't want to go back in a circular direction to what we just talked about. But we did just establish that in many historical events or in conversations with people about their feelings about their ancestors or where they come from, that that, that, that can be information that's valuable. Not that it's determinative, not that it changes or de can control your outcome of your life but that it is it, it, valuable and that at times in the classroom, teachers see value in talking about those issues. Well, well, and it, it doesn't mean they, they hate America or that they're not patriotic or that they're not interested in showing the way in which hey, history is, is hey, multi-dimensional. History should be taught. History is truth to the best of your ability. If you don't teach American history, which includes the Tulsa Massacre, you're not teaching American Can history. Can you teach accurately. American history without acknowledging the importance of race, though? No, you cannot. But that has nothing to do with whether it's important whether you or I are black or white. Of course, race played a role. And when it did, America was a worse place. Why would we want to cultivate the worst part of American society by saying race is important? Are you it, cultivating by learning about it? Not at all. Who says we shouldn't learn about it? Who has ever, what conservative advocates we don't teach slavery? There are aspects of slavery that have been left out of conservative te textbooks, out of Prager U content. If, if there are important aspects, if, we're, if we didn't make a video teaching slavery, we will do so. Okay, that's easily solved. What's your goal in these partnerships? When you reach out to someone like Ryan, we have Steve. wholesome we have wholesome content, and one of our goal well one of our goals is to celebrate America, not because America is flawless, but because I again unlike the left and I know the left really well I was I, I studied the left I was a graduate student at Columbia in the Russian Institute I was one of seven students who studied communism and that was my field. Little did I know it would apply ever to America. And so, one of the flaws of left wing as opposed to liberal thinking is that they compare America to some dream of utopia. I compare America to other societies. I'll give you an example again. I'll take my own example as a Jew. 
My my father did his senior class thesis on anti-Semitism in America about the the places Jews couldn't uh, uh, buy a home, the law firms, law, Jewish lawyers couldn't join, Harvard having quotas on Jews, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My father's view was, and he, again he wrote his thesis on anti-Semitism in America. He said to my brother and me, his two children, you are the luckiest Jews in Jewish history to live in America. After writing a thesis on anti-Semitism in America, because my father didn't compare America to some utopia where there is no anti-Semitism, he compared it to every other nation which was more anti-Semitic. That is what a mature view of life is. You compare America to other countries. Four million black people have moved to the United States in the last decades uh, from the Caribbean and Africa. Did they think America was systemically racist? Are they stupid? If you think America is systemically racist, would you move here as a black person? Did any Jew move to Germany in the 1930s? Not one, because they knew how systemically anti-Semitic it was. They came to America and 10 or 20 or 30 million more blacks would come if they could, because they know this is about as good a place as it, it could be to live as a black or a white or anything else. This place is a blessing. Yes, we cultivate that idea that all, all things being equal, this place is a blessing. That is not cultivated in American schools today. Where is it headed? What is the dream? That more and more schools allow our content and allow, uh, allow contrary content. We're not here to stop other content. We're here to give a voice to basic ideas that are wholesome and good and let the children and let the parents decide. In many of the districts in Oklahoma, a state where you have a partnership, schools are opting out and saying that it's not part of their standards, it's not official part of the curriculum, and they're not recommending that teachers use it. Yeah. If schools keep doing that, where does this all go? Then the parents will show it to their kids on their own. But it, 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 you can't, on the one hand, tell me, oh, teachers don't, oh, teachers are teaching that America is wonderful, but we won't allow Prager U content into our room to contaminate it with pro-American content. You can't have both positions, okay? Teachers who really will ban all Prager U, all Prager U content? We don't have anything? I mean, these things are like six minutes. Do you, you know that most of our videos don't even have a political end to it? We, we just, I just edited the, the, uh, the five-minute video by a historian on Rutherford B. Hayes, a president most Americans never heard of. It, 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 you, if we showed it to any teacher and said, who made this video, liberals or conservatives, they would have no clue. Well, one challenge might be that you're not accredited. Is that something you're seeking? God forbid. We have contempt for the education system in the United States today. Well, don't say we, I. I'm not speaking on behalf of Prager U. I do. I have no desire to be accredited, and it's on the front of everything we put out, we are not accredited. Okay? The, all the woke universities are accredited. Okay? All the universities where, where uh, right now, they, they can't even say Hamas is, is a terrorist organization. The president of Brown had a, a speech just this past week. The president of Brown University, and in the, uh, the speech as written and given to the press, it says, I want you here at Brown students, if you're a Muslim student, I want you to feel free to wear your head, your head covering, whatever it is. And if you're a Jew, I want you to feel free to wear a yarmulke. And then she dropped the Jew part out when she delivered the speech because there were hecklers, there were, there were pro-Palestinian uh, hecklers in the audience. She didn't have the guts to even say, if you're a Jew, wear a yarmulke. They're accredited though, Brown is accredited. Accredited means nothing. Uh, Aristotle was not accredited. Plato was not accredited. Moses was not accredited. Maimonides was not, nor was Aquinas. Just for the record. Is the real goal something akin to conservative Disney? I mean, a full service, 360 media company? 
Um, I think Daily Wire is is more uh, working in that direction. God bless them, by the way, uh, for doing that. We're not we're not competing with Disney. I don't even know who we're competing with. But you have illustrators who apparently used to work at Disney. Who used to work yeah, at oh, our illustrators are awesome, but uh, but we're not full service. I don't know if we're doing you know some uh, variation on Cinderella. So I, I uh, and I said I say that quite seriously. I think there there is look the, the direction that that Disney has has gone in, uh, where they they dropped saying hello boys and girls because that's a binary view. I mean, that's why I don't believe the teachers who tell you, well, I don't know what you're talking about. We, we never say anything about binary or anything like that. I don't believe that, okay? Maybe, I don't say every one of them does this. That is the dominant view, as it is with Disneyland. They stopped saying boys and girls at Disneyland about, I don't know, 10 years ago, five years ago, because it might, it, it might apparently offend those who neither identify as a boy or a girl, okay? Disney is lost. And uh, the bottom line at Disney is re is actually reflecting this. A lot of people like me uh, boycott Disney. What would you say to someone, because I've spoken to teachers who feel this way, who believed that part of what you're doing is undermining public schools Public school teachers. The, the public schools them. are undermining public schools. My parents went to public schools. They were a gem. They were they, they were a jewel in the American system, where where you were taught, uh, you you were taught that this country valued you for you. It didn't divide the students by race or by ethnicity or by religion. You're all American. We're going to teach you grammar. We're going to teach you history. We're going to teach you math. We're going to teach you music. The the undermining of public schools is being done by the teachers' unions, not by Prager Union. I want to pause for a second and see, Anthony, how much time we have. Still